Welcome back to the Britannia Coin Company. We're a coin dealer based in Royal Wootton Bassett in the UK. A couple of months ago, we made a video all about the pre-decimal system, the currency system that we used in the UK until February the 15th, 1971. In that video, it came to light that lots of those coins had weird and wacky nicknames. So today we're looking at those nicknames and why they were called that. Let's start with the farthing, a denomination worth a quarter of a penny. They were referred to as coppers, as were half pennies and pennies, for their composition. Being bronze, but mainly copper, we still use the term today to refer to decimal pennies and two pence pieces. It became a colloquial term to refer to something of little value, costing small amounts of money. Next up, the half penny. Naturally, two of these make a penny. It was more commonly called a halfpenny, an alternative pronunciation which became more commonly used than halfpence, perhaps because it rolls off the tongue a bit easier. It would also be called a mag, which is a derivative of the term meg, which meant to swindle or cheat in the 1800s. It was also used to a lesser extent to describe a farthing, and then later a penny, but also used in the US to refer to a one cent coin. The coin was also called a brown, which was rhyming slang, more commonly used in London rather than elsewhere. The penny also has some intriguing nicknames. Firstly, a clod, which came from the Cockney rhyming slang clodhopper. Now, a clod was a lump of earth, and a clodhopper was old slang for a farmer or bumpkin. But it was also used in a derogatory way by cavalrymen to describe foot soldiers. In the 1600s, the word coal would be used in conversation instead of a penny, with coal being a basic necessity, but fell out of use by the 1800s. The phrases post the coal or tip the coal would continue to be used, meaning to make payment until the early 1900s. Stiver is also an older term used to describe an old penny, with roots back to the 1700s, although again losing common use by the 1900s, it came to be used because of the Dutch Stiver, which was issued by the East India Company and was the lowest denomination in their monetary units. The three pence now. Similar to the halfpenny, threepence or threepenny bit would be the most common name for this coin and used more than saying three pence again possibly due to it being easier to say. It was also called a joey. This nickname was originally used for the groat or four pence piece before that was withdrawn from circulation and the three pence coin inherited its name. The joey was introduced by the politician Joseph Hume whose name lent itself to the common nickname of the coin. He was unhappy with cabbies, taxi drivers of the time, pretending not to have change for shorter rides, so the lower denomination coin was introduced. The three pence predates the groat or four pence coin though, but the nickname passed to it in common parlance. Three pence coins would also be called a daddler, but also earlier that also referred to a farthing. It comes from the word tiddler, meaning something small. Next we have the six pence coin. Now this was commonly called a tanner, which dates back to the early 1800s, with possible roots to the Romany Gypsy term torno, meaning small one, and the Italian denaro, meaning small change. It is also suggested that the sixpence had connections with the pricing within the leather trade, with those employed in that trade being called tanners. There was also suggestions that it was named after John Tanner, who was the royal mint engraver who designed the sixpence during the reign of King George II, although the denomination does predate that issue of the coin. The sixpence was also called a bender, which originates in the 1800s, at which time the coin was solid silver. To test the metal, one would bite and or bend the coins, as pure silver was a softer metal than the forgeries of the time. It was also called a kick as well. This is another rhyming slang more commonly used in reference to a half crown being two shillings and six pence or two and kick. In the 1800s, you might have heard people calling it a sprat or spray, associating it with a small fish. Moving up a denomination, we have the shilling. Now shilling itself dates back to the old Anglo-Saxon skilling, meaning division 
a silver shilling was a division of a pound of silver, hence the name. It was most commonly called a bob, a name which seems to go back to the 1700s, although weirdly the reason as to why is unclear, but one suggestion is that it came from the word bobby, meaning halfpenny, between the 16th and 19th century. A chip too could be used in reference to a shilling, although before that it would also mean a pound. The term would become tied to the shilling through gambling, more specifically horse racing bets. It is also where we get the phrase chipping in to contribute to a pot. A shilling could also be called a dina in the mid-1800s, with Roman denarius coins, which were the foundation of many European currency systems and their names, the term dina is a reference to this. Finally, we have the gen, again in more common use during the 1800s, based on the word argent, meaning silver. Although the term generalize, meaning to lend a shilling, may also be another contributing factor to this nickname. Two shillings makes a two shilling coin, right? Well, the coin was actually called a florin. It is a fascinating coin which was first introduced as an early experiment into decimalizing the currency in the UK during the reign of Queen Victoria. With the US adopting a decimal system, France and other European countries moving to a base system of 10, there were calls in the UK to follow suit. However, this wouldn't come about until 1971, but the florin did fit in nicely into the pre-decimal currency system too, so it began to be used. The name florin actually came from the similar size and value coin of the same name used in the Netherlands. Of course, given the shilling was a bob, the florin could also be called the two bob bit as well. There was also bice, possibly from the French term bis, meaning twice. It could be used in conjunction with other slang, where a shilling was a dina, a bice dina was a two shilling piece. Now five shillings make a crown, which we'll come back to in a moment. Two shillings and six pence make half a crown. The denomination crown dates back to King Henry VIII's monetary reform, originally calling the new coin a crown of the double rose. The English silver crowns of the 16th century were produced at a time where lots of similar size and composition coins would be minted across Europe and largely exchanged in international trade. The coin was also called a half dollar, which this time dates back to the Napoleonic Wars. With Britain short of silver and gold coins due to the financing of the war, Spanish dollars were imported to fill in at a value of five shillings, also a crown, and thus the half crown was also called the half dollar. The coin was also called Mezza Karun, which is a combination of mezza, itself a corruption of the Italian word mezzo, meaning half, and a mispronunciation or misinterpretation of the word crown. It's an example of slang used by foreign immigrants, a sort of hybrid language in the 1800s. This adapted over time to become a tosheroon or tosh. So then, five shillings makes a crown. We know why that is. We also know why it was sometimes called a dollar. It was also called a quarter because four of them made up a pound. Similar to in the US, the 25 cent coin is called a quarter because four of them make a dollar. In the mid 1800s, it was also common for the coin to be called a thicken or thick one, simply for the fact that it was a large thick coin. Lastly, we'll look at one pound, which we know from 1983 as a common coin, but before that a one pound note and prior to that, before the time of the First World War, was a gold sovereign. Still in common use today, a quid, which actually seems to have started in the 1600s and comes from the Latin phrasing quid pro quo, meaning something for something else. There is also the rhyming slang equivalent, a squid. It was also called a knicker, which was London slang. Although the origin isn't clear, it could have been in reference to the nickel used in the production of coins. In the 1930s, a pound might be called cows. For a bizarre Cockney rhyming slang, cow's liquor, again linked to the use of the term nicker. There was also bar in the late 1800s from the Roman Gypsy word boro, meaning big or heavy, a similar vein in which torno became a tanner for the sixpence. 
In much more modern times, some in the north called the newly created round pound coin a Thatcher, Maggie or Brass Maggie, in reference to the Prime Minister. Some would describe the coin as thick, brassy and thinks it's a sovereign. There was also nugget or nug, alluding to the gold nuggets. It could be used more broadly to describe money in general. It became more commonly used with the introduction of the round pound coin, being gold in colour but actually having been made of brass. Finally, sov, shortened from sovereign. As we've already covered prior to the First World War, the sovereign was a circulating coin with a value of a pound. Well there we go, some fascinating nicknames for our coins, some being used more recently than others. Do let me know in the comments which nicknames you recognise, and also if you know any other nicknames for coins that we didn't cover in today's video, I'd love to know what nicknames you've heard too. Be sure as well to subscribe to our YouTube channel, it's free to do and it means you won't miss out on any of our future uploads. Our previous upload on the pre-decimal system would be a great watch alongside this one too. You can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook where we post lots of pictures of our coins. We're on Twitter and TikTok, we've got our shop and online store, but I'll see you next time for more amazing coins from the Britannia Coin Company.